Okay, so in this video, I am going to be talking a little bit more about 2023BU. And in particular, I am going to be demonstrating how to construct a light curve of this object. And what that does for us is it allows us to determine a couple of its characteristics. Number one, its rotation period. And number two, its amplitude, which is related to how spherical the object is. So to go ahead and get started, this is the image manager. And as you can see, there are 46 images here. These were kindly provided by K19 Observatory. And you also notice that these are very short exposures. Uh, they are 0.5 seconds in exposure length. And that is much shorter than the 20 second exposures shown in the previous video. Now, what that does for us is it ensures that the object is not trailed. In other words, it instead has a nice circular disk profile, a nice point spread function to work with. Now, you could still work with a trailed object if you wanted to, but that just presents a number of challenges. Uh, it also increases the risk of star interference. So whenever possible, it is preferable to have that, a nice uh, non-trailed object. So uh, with that, I'll also point out that these, these images have already been aligned and plate solved. So at this point, we can go ahead and go to Action View Images. Okay, so this is the field of view that we are looking at here. This is approximately 80 by 62 arc minutes. So as I zoom out a bit, uh, you can start to see uh, what that looks like. It is a nice wide field of view, and that helps to ensure that the object remains visible on every single exposure, in spite of the fact that it does have a very high rate of motion. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is attach ephemeris information. So I go to ephemeris attach from JPL Horizons. So as I mentioned in the previous video, this is my preference to work with this uh, interface for this kind of scenario. So here is the target identifier 2023BU and I go to ephemeris attach to dataset. And once I've done that, you'll notice that these columns are now populated. So first and foremost, you can see that it indicates that the object uh, is in fact expected to be within the field of view on every single image. So that's a good thing. And what we can go ahead and do now is I can click on an image and as you can see here, uh, the, the object will remain centered uh, within the crosshairs. And that is due to uh, this uh, setting here, uh, the follow object on selection. So if I uncheck that option, then you can see the object is allowed to go outside uh, the crosshairs. So if you wanted to do so, you could do an animation. And it's kind of interesting to look at that. And again, we could re-enable that option. And you can see that the object then instead remains within the crosshairs. So at this point, I would like to go ahead and start constructing the light curve of the object. So the first thing that I like to do is to update the aperture settings. So I'm going to go to photometry, modify aperture settings. And as you can see here, uh, we have a number of parameters that can be adjusted. Uh, the first of which is the radius one setting. So as I zoom in a bit here, uh, the goal here is to ensure that the signal of the object is tightly enclosed within that inner radius. And what you want to do is go ahead and uh, the contrast setting here, make sure that it is dialed back to the default, so zeroed out. And once you've done that, uh, just upon visual inspection, you can make sure that the object uh, signal is pretty much, again, contained within that uh, inner uh, radius. So that, for example, would be too small of an inner radius because now you're losing uh, quite a bit of signal of the object, and this would be too large of a radius because now you've enclosed a lot of background signal. So uh, just upon visual inspection, I would say uh, it looks like approximately six uh, pixels would be uh, ideal for that radius one setting. And then if you wanted to, you could, uh, you could increase the dead zone a little bit if you wanted to, but honestly, the default would probably be, be more than acceptable. So uh, these will be the settings that I use here. Uh, so if you want to copy those, you can, and then I click close. And at this point now, uh, I would like to define the comp stars. So I, I have done the 
aperture settings and now what we want to do is the comp stars but before I do that I will just point out once more that my star catalog settings and I've talked a little bit about this before uh, I do like to use the Atlas catalog for this kind of scenario uh, so we have no filter and, and the magnitude band is using the native Sloan R uh, magnitude band so again there's a lot more detail about this in other material uh, but for now just keep that in mind uh, these are the settings that I am using so again comp stars I go to photometry find comp stars and we have this module here and uh, again this trend line here you can work with that and uh, on the left here, here you have all these other settings which again are talked about in much more detail in the user guide so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get started here uh, add maybe seven or eight comp stars so I right click on each one here that looks like it's uh, close to this trend line and once I've got about seven or eight of them then I will go to graph generate data uh, from this uh, window so th these are my active comp stars that I've just defined and what this graph does is it helps you to determine and ensure that these comp stars are uh, suitable so what that means is that as you look at each one here you want to make sure that it has a nice flat uh, profile nice uh, flat horizontal profile here uh, in other words you want to make sure it is not a uh, variable star so uh, again also keep in mind you want this to be the computed mag uh, versus time for that vertical axis so now that you've done that uh, we, we now have the uh, aperture settings defined we have the comp stars defined now we can go ahead and, and create the measurement for the uh, light curve so I right click in here and I say create photometry from ephemeris information and as you can see here it now has a new photometry set so we have 46 data points here uh, one data point for each image and if we want to we can now go to graph plot all sets there's only one so that's fine and here's what this raw plot looks like so uh, this is the object here so if you wanted to go to graph settings you can type in a custom label if you want and also the horizontal axis here uh, I have it from a previous uh, session a fixed interval uh, of uh, 30 minutes which is 1800 seconds so if you want to adjust that uh, you can just make sure that your settings are appropriate so again this actually has a very very fast uh, rotation period and so uh, it, it may be necessary to adjust some of these uh, parameters so uh, with that out of the way you can see this kind of uh, behavior this is a, a very nicely defined uh, light curve for this object and if we wanted to do so we could go ahead and do period find period and just looking at the the object here again if you wanted to you could say uh, well maybe from one peak to another it is 40 seconds now typically with an asteroid you might want to have a bimodal curve so you might be looking at somewhere around 80 seconds so if I just go ahead and do from 1 to 120 seconds then that should capture the expected rotation period of the object so I can click on find period and see what we have so the first result here is in fact what is expected uh, from this object here it is 77.4 uh, seconds for the rotation period and amplitude is said to be 0 0.93 so uh, this is actually a very very fast uh, rotation period uh, and that's uh, pretty cool to see that and amplitude wise again this the, this kind of amplitude would indicate it is not uh, very spherical so uh, anyway that is about it for this video so again uh, if you are working with this kind of object uh, you can definitely uh, construct these kind of measurements it, it helps if it is not a trailed object so you can see here uh, we have this kind of profile as opposed to the previous video where it was a, a trailed object so um, again just very quick very easy to do this uh, with this kind of interface and uh, that's about it so thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.